Good afternoon. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is Tuesday, November the 12th, 2019. Hope you're doing well this afternoon. Let's start off with a look at what's happening globally. One tropical storm over here in the western Pacific, and this shouldn't be any, of any consequence to anyone except shipping interest out that way, passing well to the north of the islands here, the Marianas, and probably becomes a typhoon, but nothing out of the ordinary, so just something to watch. No other areas of interest just yet, but it wouldn't surprise me to see something try to develop in this area in the Atlantic Basin over the next week or so, as well as development over here near the Philippines, uh, as that part of the Pacific stays rather busy here as we keep moving through the month of November. Looking at the satellite animation here, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, Strong cold front with the uh, cold air uh, cross-polar flow draining down into the lower 48. There's the frontal boundary. Freezing temperatures all the way down to the Gulf Coast. So the hurricane season is, for all intents and purposes, definitely over for Gulf Coast interests. You never know. If something were to develop down here later in the month, yes, it could impact the islands over here, Cuba, the Caymans, or Jamaica, sure. But as far as the United States Gulf Coast interests, I would say with 99% certainty that the hurricane season is over in terms of any major impacts. You never completely ever say never when you deal with the weather. So, uh, But this is, this is one heck of a cold front, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Out in the open Atlantic here, some energy kind of just sitting there. Um, it's going to migrate off to the west and west-northwest with time. And it might try to develop somewhere in this vicinity. We'll take a look at that in the modeling in just a moment. If we look at the overall picture from the perspective of energy or vorticity, spin in the atmosphere, uh, it's not too much of it down in the deep tropics as you'd expect this time of year. There's the outline of that strong frontal passage. Another impulse coming down out of Canada, reinforcing the cold air that's draining into the lower 48. But overall, the intertropical convergence zone down here, rather inactive, as you would expect, as we start to lose the energy from the deep tropics this time of year and focus it more and more on the mid-latitudes and uh, look at winter storms and coastal storms and things like that. But remember, going back to the satellite animation here, the Gulf, the western Atlantic, this whole area off the east coast as well, the water temperatures are running... Uh, fairly substantially above the long-term average, looking at you know anywhere from a half to a degree Celsius above normal. And so any storms that we do get to develop over those waters, whether they be non-tropical, sometimes you get these fronts that come down, upper level energy spurs a surface low, and then that tracks up the coast. Sometimes they go out to sea. Even Bermuda over here, some of those coastal storms can impact you, depending on their trajectory. And with all the warm water lurking out here in the western Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico in and around the Florida Peninsula, it could make for an active storm pattern if the dynamics are there to get things going. And they are similar in their overall impacts to tropical cyclones, wind, you know, high seas, etc. Uh, in fact, I, I noticed that the um, Moorhead City Weather Service office here issued a nice infographic today highlighting the uh, risk to mariners and beachgoers out there from the Pamlico Sound, maybe a, a foot or two of water rises as this strong front comes through, 40, 45 mile per hour wind. Bottom line is winter weather, though maybe not quite as captivating as tropical cyclones, it impacts more people. Millions and millions of people get impacted by these winter storms every time they come through whereas a majority of the tropical cyclones form and they go out to sea or whatever. I mean, if they all hit land, we wouldn't be able to live anywhere near the coast. So overall, you know, nothing out of the ordinary with what we're seeing in the pattern. But as we'll show in just a moment, maybe some development. Sorry, you can't see that very well. Coming out of the main development region and elsewhere. Now, I was going to show you the GFS, but either... Something is wrong with the INSEP site. That's the National Centers for Environmental Prediction. And that's where Levi and weather nerds and anybody else that does their own coding to produce these weather maps, that's where they get the data from. 
uh, the main NSEP supercomputers and their servers and FTP servers and so forth. So either those are messed up, maybe they're all connected to Disney Plus. <laughs> and if you follow that, you'll you'll get a kick out of that. That is kind of funny. And uh, so maybe it's all bogged down. Maybe Disney Plus has their cloud services at the same facilities that NSEP does because Disney Plus launched today. Trust me, with a lot of kids in the household, I know. Um, anyhow, the NSEP servers, something's not right, so the GFS 12Z got stuck at like 30, 36 hours or something like that. But because we are on standard time, and I'm recording this at uh, 1.46 p.m. Eastern time. Whoops, I was trying to highlight it. That's okay. It won't let me highlight. That's fine. Um, the Euro, that's what I'm trying to say. Just spit it out, Mark. The Euro is rendering because it doesn't care about standard time and daylight savings time and all that stuff. So we're going to show the Euro. That was my point. Uh, a couple of things to point out. Um, let's use the highlighter and we'll use red. There's the front. In the uh, and this is from 12z so this is several hours ago initialized at 12z which would be 7 a.m. Eastern the front was still lagging back over the Tennessee Valley draped down through Texas uh, elsewhere again some energy that we're gonna watch out here and then we're gonna watch right off the southeast coast here as I advance through these frames that a powerful coastal storm looks like it might try to form and that'll be interesting to watch now the downside for now with publicly available Euro data that Levi provides, it's only every 24 hours. Starting in 2020, for our patrons on Patreon, I'm going to start incorporating the weathermodels.com uh, models and, and showing their stuff. And because of the new relaxed rules that the ECMWF is allowing for sharing on social media, I'll be able to do so. And it's going to be exciting, so get ready for that. We'll talk about that more later. but. Just letting you know this is every 24 hours. So this is the initial from today. Fast forward 24 hours. The front now way out here in the Atlantic. Strong high pressure building down into the lower 48. Very cold and all of that. You, you all know all about this. This is all you've heard about. So I'm not going to focus too much on lower 48 weather today. More so the tropics and the subtropics as we see what might try to develop. Uh, that's 24 hours. There's 48. Uh, still pretty cold over the east. No signs of anything down here just yet, but it's coming. And then we're going to watch over here as well. Going on out to 72 hours. Now we see some energy here trying to develop. It comes up out of the Gulf. Non-tropical. This is not a tropical wave that gets in here and then develops and moves northeast. That's not what it is. It's more of your um, baroclinic low. It's an extra tropical system, non-tropical whatever but remember these are just labels in meteorology for you and me and you know you know those that live down here it is sensible weather sensible as in you can feel it and at 72 hours there's something trying to develop here uh, along the coast and just inland over northern Florida and Georgia etc and then out here the makings of something very interesting as well well east of the islands. Fast forward another 24 hours. By the way, this is Friday morning, so this would be Saturday morning. And now this definitely has my attention. So a quick few lessons. See all of these lines right here? These are called isobars, lines of equal pressure. When they are close together like that, we call that a tight pressure gradient. And what happens when you have that is in this case, the wind would be pretty brisk here out of the northeast over the ocean we call that a fetch a fairly long fetch and as such from Jersey down to the Carolina coast here this could be a stormy nasty weekend coming out of a full moon cycle still the astronomical high tide of the month we need to watch this and so I'll focus this on this very closely over the coming days as we see what develops with this out over the ocean itself energy starting to gather non-tropical in its structure but over very very warm ocean water out here the Gulf Stream runs out here water temperature still 26 27 Celsius 80 81 Fahrenheit maybe even warmer than that same thing out here this energy starting to try to gather still well east of the islands 
Um, again, this is Saturday morning, four days out. Sunday morning, now, wow, that really has my attention there. Uh, Outer Banks in North Carolina, the Virginia Capes, Delaware, uh, the Sounds, you know, even down to the Cape Fear region, uh, the wind direction changes, though, definitely more northeast, north-northeast, whereas along the Outer Banks here, uh, you know, east-northeast to northeast, that's a heck of a storm signal in the Euro, non-tropical in nature, but who cares? The energy is still, you know, there, it's just larger. It's not as bundled around a warm, banded, well-structured, central dense overcast that we see with a hurricane or a tropical storm. Nevertheless, same kind of impacts. It's just colder, and it's a different season. So we'll be watching this very closely, and then there's the energy still trying to get its act together uh, here at day five. This is, again, Sunday morning at day six. The storm system off the North Carolina coast starts to move out. This starts to get together a little bit more. We'll see. That'll be interesting to watch on the cloud shots. If this comes to fruition, then certainly by this time, uh, sometime in the weekend, you would expect that the National Hurricane Center would issue a tropical weather outlook for this feature, so we'll watch for that. Finally, at day seven, uh, another storm seems to form out here. It's not the same one coming back. There's another one there, weaker. And then this is starting to come together more, and we'll see what happens. Now, just for entertainment purposes only, sort of like what to look for beyond the normal scope of reasonable forecasting, I mean, a week out, that's really stretching it. So the caveat here, as we look to days um, eight and nine, it's far out in time. So let's look at day eight just for the heck of it. Not much with it, and it just kind of goes away there. You see the energy out here that I'm talking about. So something to watch, especially in the shorter term, again, days four and five, uh, mainly for you folks down here along the mid-Atlantic and the southeast. But this is worth watching because if it does come together up here, it could send some swells down towards the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, parts of the northern leewards, and that could be impactful. A lot of people migrating down to that area, uh, as evidenced by our good friend and fellow patron, Brent, uh, who lives down in uh, St. John. Him and Timothy, another one of our patrons. Timothy and Brent both host cameras for us, by the way. Uh, our live nest cams that we have down there. They're focused on the beaches, and they're telling me that a lot of people are starting to show up that vacation and migrate. It is. Humans migrate. We do. We call them snowbirds. And they are showing up down here in the islands, apparently. So, you know, we want to keep an eye on that in case they want to hit the beach and there might be some additional rough surf. And, and hey, you know what? Even this system, churning up the ocean, could send some swells coming in from the northwest. So you never know. We'll try to, you know, focus on whatever impacts we can. So a busy time ahead, even if it's not directly tropical storm and hurricane related. I'm going to emphasize this more and more as I branch out and cover more impactful weather than just hurricanes. That's what we're going to be doing here for the future of our little program that we got going on. All right, our little corner of the Internet. Now, looking ahead, you know how much I enjoy the tweets from Ben Knoll. He is down in New Zealand. Mouse over his name. So you get his credentials there, meteorologist with the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in New Zealand, uh, climate science, maps. Maps is an understatement. This guy is real good at maps and coding, and he's very popular in the Hudson Valley with snow days and so forth and so on. What is he tweeting about lately? This is from a few days ago, that the latest, and if I remember this correctly, NMME stands for North American multi-model ensemble, I think, something like that. Bottom line, it's like a multi-model ensemble group. It's a great way to kind of get a glimpse into the future, but it's not necessarily verbatim, okay? You don't look at this and go, that's what's going to happen next year. It's like, okay, something to look for. To put it in sports analogy, it's just like a pro team says we're going to sign so-and-so for next year, a basketball team, college. You know, I love my college ball. So-and-so team has a big commitment uh, from wherever. Uh, ESPN top five commitment for the class of 2020. 
whatever. You look ahead, you go, great, they may be good next year. Same thing with looking at this kind of data. It's not necessarily what's going to happen, but a look into the future of what could happen. That being said, all of my analogies uh, notwithstanding, what does it show? Well, this is next July. All right, fast forwarding to next July, and we'll use black here. Warm Atlantic, colder Pacific. That's the bottom line, and that's what it says. The temperature pattern, pattern resembling a La Nina type surface temperature as we get into 2020. So we'll see. That'll be part of what we track in the off season, um, which we're not there yet, but we'll keep an eye on this going forward. Very interesting tweet because, yes, that would have huge implications on the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, no doubt about it. All right. We got a uh, T-shirt that's available. want to promote this. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for T-shirts. I've got 23 days to go. I think I'm going to shorten this. I'm going to get custom ink to shorten this to a two-week campaign. I had it set at four weeks, but we want to get these delivered well in advance of the Christmas season. Uh, nine folks, 100 is my goal, but I've got enough. I only needed to sell six, and they would ship them at the price that we agreed to, etc. So it's good to go. You know, If we sell five more, that's great. I just think it's great that you guys are interested in them. They are in white, gray, and ice gray. That's the front. The back is this really cool uh, sort of tour kind of deal like you'd get from a band, right, that goes on concert tour and uh, rock band or whatever. There you go. Those are all the cities. Well, not cities, but regions. See, I got lost up on the whole concert tour thing. Those are all of the areas that uh, the the regions there, and then the, each each of these names, those are all of the storms, whether it be a tropical storm or hurricane, it does not matter. I thought this would let me zoom in. I don't know why it's not. Let's go back to the original. Oh, there we go. Duh. Sorry. Um, yeah, starting with Bertha in 1996, that was the first technically out in the field mission that I ever had as a professional. I had my degree, uh, you know, as a geographer already, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'd been in hurricanes before that, the outer edges of them and whatever. But 1996, Bertha was the first. And over here, um, Nestor, somewhere in here, uh, hopefully I put it on there. Let's see, there's Michael. Is Nestor in there? This might be an old graphic. I'll have to see. But Nestor was the last. And that was, of course, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I better have it on there. I have to go look at my actual shirt that I got. But nevertheless, that's what we got. Uh, everything, we call it the Hurricane Highway U.S. Tour, 1996 through 2019. I'll put a link to this in the description of today's video. You can own one yourself in gray, ice gray, or white, and it'll help to support what I do, but it'll also put an awesome one-of-a-kind T-shirt in your hands or the hands of a loved one or a friend or a colleague who is into this kind of thing. All right, so check the link out in the description. All right, so a lot to watch, even though hurricane season winding down, still impactful weather to keep an eye on, and that's part of my responsibility, is to keep you hurricane prepared, of course, but also very weather aware. And, you know, as a geographer, I like all kinds of weather, especially when it kind of tilts to the extreme side, and we want to keep on top of that. So that's part of my responsibilities here. And I appreciate you tuning in. It's awesome. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I will have more for you tomorrow.